My name is Alexander Sudarusenev Abhishekanathan. And uh, I was born in 1926. This diary was written when I was 17 years of age. During Japanese occupation, in those days, the year was called 2603, which could be 1943. 26th of February, 1943, and this is what I wrote. Nowadays, there is a great scarcity of food. Rice can't be bought without permits. Only now we realize what war is. Food unavailable and sold at terrific rates. The Japanese introduced a new currency to replace the Straits dollar. Because of the banana design on the notes, locals called it banana money. But the banana currency started to suffer from high inflation and dropped drastically in value because the authorities would simply print more whenever they needed more money. There was no accounting, there was no serial number. I mean, it was just, it was literally just a piece of paper. I'm Eileen Wong. I'm 83. Prior to Japanese occupation, we had a very comfortable life. We just, of course, we were young. We went to school and went home and played our games. But at the Japanese occupation, I had to go to work at the age of 12. I learned Japanese for six months and then went to a firm and became a Japanese typist with 3,000 characters in front of me. I signed a contract for 40 Japanese dollars, and at the end of the three years, the 40 Japanese dollars couldn't even buy a chicken. That it was inflation, bad time. I had a friend who had a one room full of notes, but I don't know how rich they were. It wasn't worth much, he said. The banana currency became so devalued that a lot of the business done during the Xiongnan years was barter trade, with rice, sugar and salt. People also preferred to be paid with food. Sometimes when I look back, it was the happiest time of my life. Waterloo Street was where there was the main Japanese school for learning the Japanese language. And somehow the, the sensei knew that I, I was a good musician, and he asked whether I could be used to teaching Japanese songs on radio. And uh, I said, yes. So, <laughs> so there was I singing all the most favorite Japanese songs. We were paid with food and not with money. So I would receive some loaves of bread and some cakes. During the Japanese occupation, huge amounts of money chasing shrinking amounts of goods led to hyperinflation. People had to go to the black market for some of their necessities as soon as the occupation started because their supply chain was broken. The black marketeers would set up roadside stalls at Sungai Road displaying samples of goods they had on offer. A black market, I mean, to put it bluntly, is an illegal market. It's a market that operates in the absence of, of um, just and fair market mechanisms. So the black market, definitely in terms of food, was a direct response to the strict controls on food and the rationing of food that the Japanese had undertaken. It's an illegal economy that works, and um, it happens, of course, because there's food uh, that's uh, scarce and there's shortage of, of supplies. Which doesn't mean to say that there isn't enough for everybody. It's just that it's being hoarded, right? So you have available food and commodities, but it is, it is restricted in a few hands. And this, again, didn't ensure any kind of equal distribution because only people who had something that they could trade for the restricted commodities had access to the black market. And in between the work, 
I used to sell black market things because that salary was so small, I could hardly buy a few bag of beans. And so I worked by selling gold, textiles, and made a lot of money. If people gave me something, I just added $100 to it like that and sold it. If you want real patent medicines, you have to buy it with, uh, in the black market with uh, not the Japanese notes. They were inflated, very much inflated, with uh, tiger notes, which is British notes which if you had any, you could buy medicines, you could buy razor blades and all the black market things. Towards the end of 1942, the military administration began grouping suppliers of various commodities into distribution monopolies called kumiai. Their job was to prevent profiteering and escalating prices by controlling the flow of goods. Producers of various goods had to sell to the kumiai which in turn licensed a group of traders to deal with the product. Could 我們是插住的地方,不是說我們是不是去收的,我們有個地方,我們掛個招牌在,我們收買魚,那些魚,那些人拿來,不是只有當地的漁夫,我們對面海的那個對面海的人來到,走走走走,去到江啊,西元島,
Now, if you had access to salt during the war, pickling and preserving your own vegetables was a great way to keep them for future use. And the flavor from the fermentation also made them a very tasty condiment with which you could season dishes. Because they are preserved with a lot of salt, we do have to soak them in water before cooking just to remove the excess salt so that they're not too unpalatable. So I'm just going to let those soak while I cut up the garlic and the red chili. So I'm just going to thinly slice the chili. We don't need very much of it, just a bit to give a kick of heat to the dish. And we're going to finely chop the garlic. So now we're going to cut the squid. And of course, for good food hygiene, always use a separate cutting board and clean knife for seafood and vegetables. There are a couple of ways to cut this. We could simply just slice it into rings. But today, I'm going to cut it into small pieces that will curl up during frying, and they will look quite attractive. So I'm just going to slit the body open. I'm just going to score it part way through the flesh. This will help it to cook quicker, and it will also make an attractive pattern once the squid slices cook and curl up. Sotong has been prepared, so now I'm going to squeeze dry the mustard greens. And squeeze them gently just to get rid of uh, extra moisture. And now we can proceed to stir fry everything together. Now I'll add the chopped garlic and chili. And I'm just going to fry them for a couple of minutes until they just start to turn golden and their fragrance rises. Next, I'm going to add the sotong. So sotong is the Malay word for squid. Now, you either cook squid for a very short time or a very long time, because otherwise it's going to be tough. So we're just going to stir fry it for maybe a minute. Now the sotong is cooked, so I'm going to scoop it out of the pan so I can fry the kiam chai separately. Next, I'm going to add the mustard greens to the pan and fry them for a little bit until they dry out slightly. Kiam chai is the local Hokkien name for salted pickled mustard greens. Now I'm going to return the sotong to the pan and fry everything together for several seconds more so the flavors can mingle. Now I'm just going to add a little bit of sugar because its sweetness will accentuate the salty sourness of the mustard greens. And there we have it, a tasty comfort dish that can be served with rice or porridge. One of the advantages of living on an island was that people could turn to the waters around them to supplement their diets. Many learned to catch their own fish or seafood, which was plentiful in the sea, rivers, and even the drains. We had no, no meat, no fish to supplement our diet. Therefore, my, my uncle, my second uncle, uh, Han Yen and I, we, every evening, you know, we, were in a, we were in a monsoon drain. I used to hold a torch for him, <laughs> catching eels. But we were very successful, you know. They were actually quite delicious, if you know how to cook it well, with, uh, with chili and sambal, and very nice. We ate a lot of eels. Go 如果那个什么刮胡刮那个什么冬瓜那个就已经不挨刮了总哈那个鸡瓜就一点如果有难呢那个鸡瓜了有难那就劈掉就一又大就又长的又小的就对一堆啊你就很便宜啊看看的那个
，而是他说不一问他要不要，他说不要。这很多人讲也不是我一个人要，每个都要。不过他的没就讲，每个人拿两啊三四个就好，不要拿多，随别人的要这样讲。那就好，我就就是拿几个就几个了，回来就吃干净。呃，就也是拿一点油去煎，煎我的姜，那个姜也不是嘛，那个姜也是偷偷明明丢，我们又是捡回来，捡回来好就要，不好我们就丢，就就拿姜啊，拿些煎煎的拿水去滚，滚了这个头，那个头那个骨头弄就都不要，啊，不要就吃个汤清清，我们就拿来当汤喝。有天就看有捡到那个。那个苦力菜也好，那个白菜也好，有些的啊，有些青菜，有些有，有些都没有。你就洗干净，把那放那个那个鱼汤，那个鱼滚那个滚起来就有汤有菜，就可以吃。The Japanese tried to exert power over the population of Singapore by controlling food and money. The consequence was an unequal distribution of wealth and food supplies. Whether doing business, buying or selling on the black market, or rummaging through rubbish, many people were literally fishing for food. It was a game of chance. You never knew what you were going to get when you cast your net. Thank、you